Hey guys, hey, um, I'm going to start a tutorial regarding this typography project. Uh, it's project seven, so we're nearing the end of the semester. Um, I think this is going to be kind of a fun project because it's deceptively sort of simple, um, but it can be relatively complex and interesting and playful and experimental if you choose for it to be. So I'm going to try to encourage you guys to really like push um, this idea of the modular grid and how you can use typography or arrange a publication document or create a publication layout with this modular grid on a page. So of course you need to do your readings and you need to start thinking about these quiz questions. There are these additional readings that I've provided. This reading right here is optional, a future for design principles and screen typography. Um, it's not required, but at this point, um, I, I consider all of you all to be um, advanced students. So you need to start doing advanced readings. Um, so I would highly suggest that you take a look at this, which is included in the PDF. Really all you need to do or all you need to complete this project is your own personal computer, Adobe InDesign, um, and some sort of text that you're going to use as you move through these pages. And we'll discuss that here in a little bit. But the, here's the project synopsis. Create a two page 18 by 18 inch publication document. Each page must contain 16 modules use a modular grid to arrange a text of your choice in as many ways as you can to create three unique iterations of modular typographic exploration. And I, I know that may sound a little bit confusing, but essentially you need to create an InDesign document with two 18 by 18 inch pages. And then you're going to arrange your chosen text on three separate layers to create three separate iterations of your text, which means that you're going to have six pages total because two times three is six. By employing just one size of type and flush left alignment only, you will construct a typographic hierarchy exclusively by means of spatial arrangement. To make the project more complex, begin adding variables such as weight, size, and alignment. Consider this project, project as an opportunity to showcase typographic information clearly and elegantly with structural, structural modular parentheses and controlled experimentation. And I, I, I don't know, I, I choose these words really carefully when I'm describing projects, guys. And it, it may sometimes feel conflicting because I say, okay, I want you to be experimental, but I want it controlled. Um, and I want things to be elegant which almost kind of implies, uh, I guess, more personal. And then I <laughs> juxtapose that word with structural. And I'm doing that very purposefully because that's a, I'm creating a space for you to find yourself as far as uh, being a visual artist or designer, okay? There are no hard rules with this business. Um, so you make, you, you, you kind of design those rules for yourself and you find yourself within these project as you move along through the courses with me. So I'll just kind of leave that there. I know that that may sound like rhetoric, but it, hopefully it makes sense to you. I also want you looking at the work of Emil Ruder, um, who is just a name that you should know as a developing graphic designer so that when you're at a cocktail party, you can talk the talk with other design folks. And uh, furthermore, you're probably gonna, I'm hope, hoping that you'll learn a little bit from this guy. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, and you, you'll even notice I'm creating these documents in InDesign, right? Okay, so yeah, you can, I, I love InDesign. That's what, this document is what you should see on your end, something similar. So let's go to, uh, to InDesign and hit Command N for new. And I'm just going to call this 
project seven, okay? And I'm gonna be using the, uh, the inches as far as units, and I want it to be 18 by 18 inches. And with this particular circumstance, I do want facing pages because I want two facing pages. And then I'm gonna create three layers, one for each iteration. So three times two is six, as we had discussed earlier. I'm not gonna worry about all this business. I can change that later, but yeah, this is a good place to start 18 by 18 facing pages, project seven, create, we're ready to go. I'm going to hit command zero so I can see everything. Although, let's see what's going on. There we go. So there's, there's my page, but actually I need two pages, right? So I'm going to come over here to pages and I'm just going to say, here's the little icon, create new page. I'm going to add that second page. Although, arg. okay, folks, I didn't anticipate this. Um, I'm gonna create that third page because for some reason I want these right next to each other. So I'm gonna dis discount that first page and use page two and three uh, primarily for this document, okay? Um, so I guess I need to create a layer, right? Or use the existing layer. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a diagram for my modular system. And then I'm gonna turn the grid on so I can see what's going on. And let's see, I need 16 modules within this system. So I wonder, uh, 18 divided by two is nine, nine divided by two is 4.5. So I'm gonna grab uh, the rectangle tool. I'm just gonna click and it's gonna ask me, hey, how, how large would you like this square? And I'm just kind of going on a hunch, guys. I'm just kind of doing a little math in my head. And I'm going on a hunch. You might do this in your sketchbook, right? To work all these dimensions out, to create a diagram or a simple sketch to work with. There's my initial uh, square, which can also be interpreted as a module. And so what I'm gonna start doing, I'm also gonna come up here and say, okay, I wanna start using snap to document grid because that is our old friend all right and i'm going to start doing something that you have probably seen me do before it's not an accident what you're seeing me do here okay i'm going to start creating an array of modules where i can arrange and place typographic information but you'll notice if you've had previous classes with me i do this all the time it's the first thing I always do is I create a structural array so I can arrange things in a rational order. And I always use, <laughs> this is just out of habit, cyan and magenta. And what I do is I just repeat this, okay? And look at that. I'm gonna do it again except I need to go to object transform and I need to ro rotate, right? Because I'm trying to create a grid like modular system here. Now I wanna make sure it's, I'm gonna zoom in and make sure everything is perfect because I can get a little OCD with this software and I encourage you to be OCD as well. Being a little OCD when you're a designer is a good thing, okay? Uh, it'll help you. And look at this, I have this beautiful array now. I'm gonna repeat this entire array on this other side. And look at this, it's just gonna, I have snapped a grid on, so boom, it's just gonna snap in there. Now let's back up and take a look at what's going on. I'm gonna hit S for, or excuse me, command S. And you know, I'm gonna say project seven demo. And I'm gonna save it in my project folder, okay? If you guys aren't creating project folders at this point, then, then you haven't been listening. You need to create project folders um, so that you can keep everything well organized. If you go into an office, 
and someone asks, hey, you know, uh, uh, can you forward me your project folder? And you've got files in six or eight different locations. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. Okay, you need a project folder and everything needs to be very well organized. So you can even see this is the InDesign document um, for the actual PDF that I've given you on Blackboard. Here are all the assets, right? For the articles. So I'm trying to stay organized as well, but I don't want it in there. I just want it on the outside, boom, project seven demo, good. Okay. And by the way, look, you can see that I did label this layer diagram. Now I, I need to decide on some text, okay guys? And I think that what I'm gonna do is I have this idea in my head that I wanna, I want to manipulate and play with some text from an Edgar Allan Poe story. I'm not even sure which one, it's just an idea I have. So I'm gonna go with Edgar Allan Poe. I just like Edgar Allan Poe, like that story, The Black Cat. In fact, let's search for that one. And I'm hoping that I can find some text. There it is, let's see. Published in 1845, it's not short text. <laughs> so I may not need all of this, okay? But I'm gonna grab it, okay? I'm gonna grab the black cat. And it's way more text than we need. Uh, but that's perfectly okay. So I've copied it. And now, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that copied text into a text edit document. So, and with this text within text edit, right now it's full of, it has the background, it has a font or specific typeface associated with it. It has hyperlinks. It has a lot of stuff that I don't want because I just want the raw text. So I'm gonna come up here to format, make plain text. And now I'm just gonna, I just want the raw text, okay? Now I'm gonna hit Command S and I am going to save this file in my assets folder for this project so that I can refer to it later. And I'm just going to call it uh, Black Cat, all right? And again, I'm staying organized in my uh, project folder, as should you. So I've got that. It's ready to go when I get to that place within the project. But I have decided that I'm going to be using The Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe. You can use any text you want. Um, so it's up to you. I also think that it's good, hold on, I'm gonna go back to this project seven document. And if you look at these two initial examples, and they're also in your Lupton book, if I'm not mistaken, this maps out exactly what you should be doing. And it kind of shows you the value of this exercise. Cause imagine that this is a book and that you're trying to arrange simple text with possibly images. We're not using images in this circumstance, but this whole, this whole business of creating a modular grid system so that you can plug in text and the uh, visual asset information in a flexible way is the goal. So these are the two examples that you should sort of be looking at uh, as we move forward. But obviously you can be more experimental. These are pretty cut and dry. And I do encourage you to express yourself with typography and make this project your own. Okay, so uh, I've said that. Now let's go back to our project seven demo. We've got our diagram array set up. Um, now we need to start arranging text within these spots. But I think, I don't know, like I, I, I wanna set up a system where I can kind of see the margins, because if we look back at this example, these have um, horizontal and vertical gutter margins that are quite useful. We can kind of do the same thing uh, with this, this square 
modular diagram that I've sort of started started to build. But you know, I, I want to be able to see the grid in the background. That's the problem with placing this. You can't see the grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the opacity to like yeah, thirty percent, so I can see what's going on. So if we zoom in, oh man, I love that. Look at this beautiful. Zoom out. Now we can start thinking about these, th this margin and padding. Okay, so let's see, I'm gonna, I don't know, I have this idea where I wonder if I can just select this and then I can just kind of place it. Look at that. Because this has opacity as well, they're both 30%. When they are on top of each other, they're starting to build this diagram. So I have to kind of do something similar to what I was doing before, except let's copy and paste this. I don't want that. I want that to be magenta as well. But look at this. We can sort of create a beautiful, whoops, a real articulate system with padding as well. And uh, I don't want to redo all of that. So I'm just going to work smarter, not harder, and just copy and paste those guys. And again, I'm doing the same thing, transform, rotate. And I'm going to drop these right in here. So you can, you can move through this kind of an exercise pretty quickly. And I'm holding shift with my left pinky, by the way, so I can select all of these at once. And look at that. Whoop. We're making our life so much easier. That's what it's all about. And solving problems quickly. If you're in a design office and you want to spend six hours doing something like this, your marketing director is going to be upset because he's paying you by the hour. So you know, design, I, I hate to say this, folks, but design really is... Um, it's a profession where you got to move quickly because time is money, which is kind of fun. You know, it's a, uh, I don't know. It's, it's part of the game. It's, it's part of the exercise as far as the balance between art and business. And if you embrace that, it can be fun. If it's something that you're not going to embrace, then it can make working in a graphic design office a little bit more difficult, but you'll, you'll learn those ropes and work through them down the road. Okay, so we have a real nice diagram. Again, it's all on this one layer that we can make appear and go away. But for the right now, it's a good tool for us to arrange this Edgar Allan Poe text. I'm gonna hit Command S because you never know when your application is going to crash or do something funny that'll freak you out and set you back and uh, cause the office to, to miss a deadline or whatever. So yeah, uh, you got to be on your toes when you're doing this business. Okay, so now we just need to start having some fun with this text. So let's go back to our black cat text. And hmm, I'm just going to start grabbing stuff. And because I've stripped this text with a text edit of any of its uh, extraneous information like a type face or a font or a size or a color or a background color. I can just copy this and use my text tool and just drop it in. And I'm also gonna drop it in according To our margin rules that we've kind of set up here. That's not enough information for me though, but let's see. I'm just going to continue to play. I am uh, I'm trying to think. I, I want to use Baskerville. I've kind of been on a Baskerville uh, kick, I guess you could call it. And I'm going to blow up that typeface. All right. And I'm just going to have to go in and start playing, right? All right. 
I don't want the hyphenation on it. I can't stand hyphenation. It drives me insane. Uh, you guys will have to make those sorts of decisions on your own. But for me and hyphenation, the answer is oftentimes no. So um, I'm just going to continue. Actually, I have a real bold idea, you guys. Are you ready for this? Hmm. I'm going to select all this text. Wow, that's crazy. I'm going to select all of it. In fact, yeah, I'm going to select all of it. And it'll be an exercise in constraint where I have to fit all of this text on these uh, two pages. OK? And by the way, you do have to do this uh, more than once because you have to create three iterations. And before I hang up the phone, so to speak, we'll talk about that. But let's go in. Look at this. I have selected all of the text and placed it in this text box. And I've turned hyphenation off because that's just uh, my, my personal preference. But you can see there's that little uh, indicator letting me know that the text is definitely overflowing here. So what are we going to do? Well, we got to we got to start placing this text strategically. Oops. Okay. I'm going to rotate transform Rotate uh, 90 degrees, correct, right? And I'm gonna grab this text object. And again, I am playing by these rules or this constraint that I've set up for myself. To create the black cat text composition. And you can kind of already see, look, at I can select anywhere and all of these text boxes are going to be connected. You don't have to do it that way. You can, you can just um, be more minimal with your project. Um, but somehow I am more apt to do it this way. And <laughs> I don't really think it's... Okay, the other thing I want to do, actually, I, I'm making a mistake already. Sorry guys, I need to create my layer for iteration one. Iteration one. And I need to select the text information I've already created. I need to move it to that layer. And then I'm gonna lock down my diagram layer so I can make it appear and go away as I please. Okay, so I've corrected that and I've got the diagram layer locked. So now I'm going to go back to just lacing these words through this document. I'm going to go all the way. Yeah, OK. Huh. It's really interesting, you know, I'll go back and I'll examine these words to emphasize, you know, I was just looking at, like, they're beautiful words by Edgar Allan Poe, the way he's combining things. Um, so yeah, we, and we may have to change the typeface size because we may discover that things just aren't going to fit, <laughs> right? Okay, so let's see, I'm gonna, Oops, be down here. Here's that indicator. All right. Okay, let's just continue down this road. Oops. And of course, you know, I want my text boxes to to be in close communication with that grid and 
the modular diagram that we've created. But you know, I, I want this, I'm gonna transform. I wonder if, these guys, we can invert text with typography. Okay, and you can kind of see this is starting to develop. I, I want to do something really kind of strange and radical. I'm going to rotate and I am going to go to transform and I'm going to flip. No, we, we're just having fun here. All right, guys. And, you know, text can be expressive as well. This is an exercise in understanding the modular grid. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to use the software and talk to you guys at the same time. So again, we still have a lot of text to run through, lots and lots to do. I'm going to object. I'm going to flip. Let's see. Just moving this stuff around. And I'm on a, I'm kind of lacing these modules over and under each other, almost sort of like they're being woven together. And then I'm allowing them to kind of play against and with each other there to do some interesting things. And then every once in a while, you can turn your grid off. You can turn your diagram off and just see how things are going, right? Huh. So uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was the way that you can occasionally go into this these text boxes and make certain words bold okay or even all caps to really start to play with this even further okay hmm. okay so this is, I'll zoom in on that because we need to grab won't let me grab that. There we go. Got it. I want these to be very, these little modules to be very conservative and to the point and simple, nothing complicated. And I'm gonna do the same thing right here. It's just kind of fun, I like this. I have no, I mean, I know where I'm going because I had an idea in mind, but there's a, a real amazing element of not knowing where you're going as well. Um, Oops, don't want to do that, but I do want to grab. Why it's doing that? I got to zoom in on that guy apparently. Oh, okay, I got it. You can see there's still plenty of text for me to work with here. It's a little bit crazy, right? right. And again, I'm. I chose the black cat by Edgar Allan Poe. You can choose anything you want, but you can, you can see these beautiful columns 
where information can be arranged. I want this text box to be inverted. So I'm gonna to go to object transform, flip horizontal. I have to replace that guy. Beautiful. Okay. Let's object transform flip vertical. I'm going to place this one right there. There's still more text. Where is that? There it is. Thought I lost it, but I found it. Zoom out. I'm just kind of running through this, guys. Hmm. I'm trying. I like this idea of, you know, I really like even that word interwoven. I'm taking a more experimental approach. Obviously, this would not be acceptable for a conservative publication, but it is acceptable as, um, as an exercise in understanding how the modular grid works. But if you did this in a graphic design office where someone was requesting a, a very legible publication, uh, you might get into trouble, <laughs> just to warn you. Uh, so, this again is uh, us just kind of playing. So you could do this all day long and I'm gonna, there, I'm gonna fill out these two areas up here, these two last modules. And really you don't have to fill all the modules, do you? But I happen to be doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, you don't have to do it that way. But what I'm gonna do is object transform, uh, flip horizontal, put this guy right back where he was. And I'm just gonna take a step back and see where we are with things. You can kind of see there's some interesting order happening and we could layer and layer and play with this system continually for quite some time. Um, I'm not going to go through all three iterations with you, but what I do want to emphasize is the way that you can um, go into some of this text and change it. Okay. You might even want to blow some of it up, right? I'm just kind of scanning for words right now, just to have a little bit of fun. Let's blow up. I don't even know. It's hard for me to read that, which is okay. Like I said, this is just an exercise. We're just having fun and learning the software. But I'm even going to play with the kerning here. I'm actually going to be very eccentric with the kerning. Okay. So um, that's only iteration one. And obviously this is not even close to being, excuse me, complete. You could continue down this road for quite some time, uh, interweaving all of your text from your chosen story or wherever you're getting your, uh, your letter forms um, to do some interesting things. As long as you're being true to this initial diagram, okay? And you can kind of see how things are starting to sort of wrap around or through and within that system, that modular system that we created. Uh, for your example, the next step would be to add a couple more layers, one called iteration two, and another called iteration three. 
because you are going to export export these pages individually as PNGs or JPEGs. And of course, you all know how to do that, but file, export, um, and then you're going to have some options here. Uh, and then all the pages will, will be sent out. And, and by the way, you would just disregard this first page for this particular exercise. But I think at this point, you all get the idea uh, when you're working on iteration two and three, obviously maybe lock that first iteration down and make it go away so that you can start on this second iteration and third. Um, there's only one other thing that kind of, I mean, I just, was, I just wanted to do <laughs> mostly just to satisfy my own curiosity, but what if you want like a, a graphic in the background? So I'm gonna create um, another layer. I'm gonna call it iteration one graphic. Okay, and notice how it's underneath iteration one text, the way that it's arranged on the layers palette. Now I'm gonna come over here, I need to go online and I'm gonna just, uh, I wanna find a black cat PNG. And you could download a multitude of these guys. I'm just going to see if I can grab that one. There we go. It's going now. Save as. Okay, I'm going to drop that in my assets folder, right? And I'm going to grab another one, this one, because he's kind of scary and freaking out. I like that. Save image. Okay. And again, um, in my assets folder, but that's the, hold on a second. Hold the phone guys. Gosh darn it. Archive courses. So you got to make sure you're saving things in the right location. There we go. And I'm going to create a specific folder called black cats. It's my first black cat. I think I want this. So I generally want some PNGs with a transparent background. And um, I am going to play with the images just a little bit, okay? One more. Just, oh, this guy, I got to have this guy. Okay. Okay, so now I have the iteration slash one graphic layer selected. And now I'm going to go to place. And I am going to go to my folder. Typography one, project seven, assets, black cats. There they all are. See, the system works. And I'm going to select a black cat. And I don't know, that was supposed to, this is really funny guys. Uh, first of all, okay. It's supposed to be there. Now that's right, I gotta put this back into, into place. That's, for some reason that is not working. I'm gonna make my typeface go away for a moment so I can focus on the cat. Let's try this one. There we go, that's working. And I wanna start playing with these modules and uh, the imagery, bring my grid back to, okay guys? So I can see. What I, I get really OCD with this stuff, so you can kind of see I'm kind of arranging everything perfectly. And then you can double click into this object and blow up this cat, right? And then start to do start to create these really interesting kind of compositional moments with your cat. And by the way, you know, again, you know, layer management so you can control what's going on. So I'm gonna make uh, 
Let's go away again. I'm going to copy that black cat. I'm going to rotate. And again, I mean, at this point, I'm just having fun. There's, there's no rhyme or reason. I mean, you may have a sketch or you may have a vision in mind and you should try to meet that, that vision. But for me, I'm just trying to have some fun, okay? Um, and I'm trying to also satisfy the parameters of the project. I don't know why, but I keep getting this like uh, alpha channel background. That's a no-go. So I didn't choose the right images. I wonder if this one will work. No, darn it. But you know, I could bring those into Photoshop and do some modifications. But that is a little bit disappointing. That's the only one that's gonna work for now. So now I'm going to just kind of blow it up. I'm still using the system, right? Okay. I like that. Okay, let's bring up back the text. So now I'm just kind of continuing down this road of creating my quote unquote black cat composition. You know, in certain areas too, I might have to, I might have to select some of these words. Oops, obviously I gotta un unlock that layer, don't I? Because that black typeface is not popping against the black cat. So I've gotta make some modifications. So you can really start to have a lot of fun with this. Okay, guys. And just remember, this is only the first iteration and the first iteration has two pages. You have to do this a second and a third time, okay? Um, and have fun with this. And I think that's enough information for you guys to go down this road of fun and experimentation and clarity and playful typography. And, and remember this, this whole system, this modular grid system is something that, that you will always use that you will always leverage to solve design and visual problems quickly and efficiently and rationally. Um, so yeah, use it to your advantage and have fun with this project. And I'll look forward to reviewing what you submit. Have a good, uh, have a good day or evening.